just like those examples, sensors are part of everyday life, whether at home or at work. There's probably not a day in our life where we are not impacted by those sensors. Previously, we talked about intro sensors, transducers, sensors, kind of sensors, operations, and its application. In this video, we're going to talk more about what sensor is, what it can do, and how can we use it for process control. A sensor is a device that senses something. Today, we have sensors that can see, feel, hear, smell, and even taste. Without sensors, our home and work lives would be quite difficult. For example, as you drive to work, the traffic lights at an intersection are controlled by sensors embedded in the road. These sensors detect your arrival at the intersection. As you approach the grocery store, the door automatically opens because of a sensor. From this example, we see what are the physical properties that a sensors are detecting. They are the level, temperature, position, speed, flow, and pressure. Going further with sensors, we can classify sensors as passive or active. Basically, a passive sensor requires an external source of power while an active does not. One example of passive sensors is a resistance temperature detector or RTD. RTD is a device that changes resistance with a changing temperature. To take advantage of this change in resistance, an external supply or an excitation circuit is required to produce a change in voltage. On the other hand, a thermocouple is an active sensor which does not require an external power supply to operate. As a thermocouple is exposed to an increase in temperature, it will develop an increasing voltage across it. Now, let's try to classify these sensors according to its classification. For active sensors, we have photovoltaic cells, thermocouples, piezoelectric devices. For passive sensors, we have strain gauges, magnetometer, and barometer. Now that we can classify these sensors according to its classification, let's try to find out how these sensors are used. Sensors are used in huge number of applications. They are used in data precision, monitoring, and control systems in almost every industry. Different sensors have been created to measure various types of physical phenomenon. Here are some types of physical phenomenon with their corresponding sensors that one can use to measure them. Next on the list is the sensor characteristics. It helps to describe the different aspects on how effectively sensors detect and reflect phenomena. This includes the ranges, 
which is the difference between the maximum and minimum values of the input data to be measured, the response that should be capable of responding to the changes in minimum time, the accuracy for the deviation of exact quantity, the sensitivity for change in output over the changes in the input, the linearity for those constant sensitivity, the repeatability for the deviation of reading to reading that can turn times under identical conditions, and last is the resolution which used some electrical signal to generate angular displacement and since it can be a fraction, it corresponds to one electrical impulse like one, two, and three. To determine what we will get out of those sensors we have discussed, let's tackle the types of sensors. These types of sensors may be digital or analog depending on the types of signal it will produce. We have the number one, which is the analog signals. These analog signals are the direct representation of what is being measured. The trees of what is being measured is represented through a range of values. At one time, cars had no fuel gauge and you had to have a reserve tank. Now, all cars have fuel gauges and we will next look at the sensors that make that possible along with many other measurements that automation requires. An analog sensor is the one that converts a variable physical quantity into a signal that the control system can understand, like a voltage or current. By physical quantity, we mean temperature, pressure, humidity, distance, and speed among others. There is a general category of sensor for each of this. Some sensor combine quantities like temperature and humidity or distance and speed into a single instrument generating two signals. Conversely, a digital signal represents a discrete set of possible values which are usually binary. These are by far the most commonly used sensors in the industrial world. Initially, they were simple. A contact that touched another contact when something got where it was supposed to stop. We use these sorts of sensors for anything that we divide into two states. The on and off, true and false, for example, in position, full, empty, power on, and running. Let's look at a few examples of these kinds of sensors. Proximity sensors are used for detecting close metal objects using magnetic fields. In many environments, these have replaced limit switches in position sensing applications. Capacitive proximity sensors are like a proximity sensor but for detecting non-conductive materials. They are very sensitive to contamination and historically have not been very dependable. Ultrasonic proximity detectors detect solid objects using higher frequency sound but are very susceptible to environmental conditions in dirt. We don't use them often, but they can solve sensing problems nothing else can. Now, let's try to classify these sensors according to their types. For analog sensors, we have piezoelectric transducers, resistive temperature devices, strain gauges, thermocouples, and thermistors. For the digital sensor, we only have encoders.
Now, we will make the touch sensor circuit. We are using a clear lens light emitting diode and the color of this LED in the experiment is red. The cathode of the light emitting diode is connected to the collector and the anode of the light emitting diode is connected to the 100 ohm resistor. Then, we have a voltage source which is equal to 9 volts. This yellow portion is the wire and when you touch this wire, the light emitting diode will become forward biased and it will glow because of the very small current from the base which is now amplified. Our touch sensor is now complete. This is a sensor wire and when you touch this wire, the LED will glow. What will the sensors of the future look like? Where sensor technology will take us over the next 10 or 15 years? It's very interesting to think about. The promise of smart sensors, of a smart environment, is really kind of the utopia future that we all hear about. Sensing technology will be critical to the future. I think what we see around, we see automated vehicles, self-driving cars, we see examples of uh, lights out manufacturing environments. There's factory automation, process automation, environmental diligence. People want to move from just having measurements to actually being able to control and predict. With the new um, advances in cloud computing, sensors become of critical importance to decision making. What we're finding the need for is combining the fundamental sensing technology with more technologies integrated into the same package. Smart sensors are sensors that take that native signal and at the sensor convert it into the measurement itself. And then using this data to actually control processes and change processes in a real-time basis. So what will the sensor of the future look like? It's a great question. The biggest change will be how small those sensors become in the next 10 years. We're going to see a lot more multi-measurement sensors. They'll be putting sensors inside your body in order to make measurements so you can have feedback back to your doctors. We're going to see a safer environment, uh, better productivity, especially when you think about food to serve our population as it grows. It's about reducing waste. It's about improving our ability to respond to events. Prevention of disease, of, of accidents, of really the kinds of, of safety problems that, you know, we probably couldn't even think of preventing in the days past. An interesting thing about what the sensor of the future will look like is that it really will be invisible. The sensor of the future is going to be incorporated into everything. You won't know it. It's going to be part of the natural function of the things we work with. In this video, we learned that sensors are physical devices that detect changes in physical, electrical, chemical properties and produces electrical output in response to the change. It also converts a real-world phenomenon into a measurable signal, detects physical properties in terms of level, temperature, flow, pressure, speed, and position. Classification in terms of passive and active sensors, sensor characteristics in terms of range, response, accuracy, sensitivity, linearity, repeatability, and resolution analog and digital types of signal sensors. This is all for this video. See you in the next one.